Good morning. Welcome to church service online at GA Gustav Adolf Lutheran Church in Gwinter, North Dakota. I am Jamie Decker, the intern pastor here at GA, and today I am accompanied by Indy Husted and Carolee Larson, who will be joining to help with the music part of our worship today. Um, I hope that you all can enjoy our new version of worship online. Please share this with family and friends. Um, as we are doing our best to be respectful of the social distancing that we are all under these days, uh, we are still want to be present with you and help support and serve you in these days to come. So we hope that you enjoy this service that we have provided for you today. Let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts, and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now for our youth of GA, we will be reading the Berenstein Bears, Here's the Church, Here's the Steeple.
And on this rock, I will build my church. Matthew 16, 18. The Bear family is going to the chapel in the woods. Mama and Papa go first. Where are brother, sister, and honey? Sister Bear says, here's the church and here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. Inside the chapel, everyone sits down. They open their Bibles to read. Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Then everyone opens their hymn books to sing. Old 100. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures, here below. The Witter Bruin sits down at the organ. She begins to play. Soon, Preacher Brown walks into the chapel. Preacher Brown goes to the pulpit and says, let us praise the Lord for this day. Now it's time for all young cubs to go to Sunday school. In Sunday school, the cubs draw pictures of Bible stories. They open their desks to take out paper and crayons. Later in Sunday school, the cubs put on costumes. They perform a Bible play. It is the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Sunday school is over and the cubs join their parents. Services are over too. All the bears get ready to head home. Open the doors and see all the people. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which, meant, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your, your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. 
Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a, of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of our Lord. So today's text, along with the other stories in John that we've heard over the past couple weeks, such as the wedding at Cana, Jesus' teachings to Nicodemus, and the woman at the well, are stories about relationship and abundance. Jesus offers us abundance through having a relationship with him. And right now, we may not feel abundance in our lives as the world recently seems to be a little empty. The shelves at stores are empty of some supplies. The streets, schools, and churches, and some small businesses are empty as we continue to practice the social distancing. Currently, this world may seem unfamiliar and a bit difficult as 
we have had to make changes to the way we live. Likewise, our lives change when we accept the invitation to have a relationship with Jesus. The man's life changed after his encounter with Jesus. He was no longer blind but could see. He became a disciple of Jesus and he admitted his belief in the face of adversity. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus came into this world to be light to the world so we may see beyond ourselves and discover new life in Jesus. Jesus' significant act of healing is something that I find interesting as it comes from mud, a mixture of dirt and water, or in this case, saliva. And these two simple elements were combined together and brought miraculous healing to a man. And there's something so cool about this, literally. Imagine playing in mud, squishing it between your hands and your toes as you walk in a mud puddle, or play in a mud in, with mud in the in the in a in the ground. The temperature of mud is cool, and the feeling is also cool. There's a fascinating feel to mud, and to know that something so simple can be used to bring healing. Shines light on the other simple acts that can bring healing to somebody else in this world also. A smile, a text message, or a phone call asking, hey, how are you doing? The time of social distancing is something new for all of us. Even as an introvert, uh, this time of social distancing is a bit much. However, many are taking this time to strengthen our relationships with our loved ones and our neighbors near and far. Through social media or phone calls, emails, we may have to distance ourselves from our normal lives for a period of time, yet Jesus continues to remain close to us. He continues to reveal himself to us in this world, even when we have trouble seeing or believing. Jesus revealed himself to the man after he was driven out. Jesus didn't abandon him. Many times, we are not paying attention to this world around us, but lately, the whole world seems to be paying attention. The Venice canals are clearing up and fish are being spotted swimming in them. Donations of food, supplies, and money are being used to fill the shelves at food pantries. People are finding creative ways to keep in touch with loved ones while protecting their health at the same time. Parents and teachers and pastors and lay ministers are finding creative ways of teaching and learning in this opportune time. When we are brought into a relationship with God, we start to see beyond ourselves, and we see the world around us. Jesus is the light of the world who brings enlightenment to reveal the needs of the poor, the sick, the homeless, the hungry, and the oppressed. He brings light to situations that we would rather keep in the dark and not give any attention. Out of sight, out of mind. But when Jesus comes into our lives, we are no longer able to turn a blind eye. We are no longer to ignore the troubles and hurts and needs of this world. And Jesus comes into our lives to give all people abundant love and life. The blind man in this text is the only person who actually sees Jesus for who he is, the Son of God. The one who came to this world to reveal God's works and to, to reveal God's works to and through each of us. God's works are revealed to us in creation and in humanity every day, as we are seeing this as we watch the feed on our social media. God's works are revealed to us in the simplest of things, such as mud, from which astonishing new life and healing comes, to the waters of baptism that renew us and give us abundant life in Christ. 
We are invited into a relationship with Jesus. Jesus comes to us in many different ways. We each have our own story. But in every situation, every story continues with the abundance of life that is given to us when we enter into this relationship with, with Christ. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Christ be our light. Please join with us in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up our prayers. God of light, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear us, O oh God.
presented them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. So at this time, we would normally collect the offering, but as we can see, there's not any of you here with us today. So if you would like to continue to support GA and its missions, please con continue to um, send your donations to us through the mail or through your electronic uh, accounts. We greatly appreciate all that you can do for us. Join with me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Our sending him as you are mine. Christ be your light and share the good news.
Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us. Have a blessed day. We miss all of you, and we'll see you next time.